Alexa, close the blinds. Okay. Hey guys, in this project I'm going to be showing you how to build your own Arduino based automatic blind opener which is operated using a remote control or through Amazon's Alexa enabled devices. This allows you to also set timers and build the opening and closing of your blinds into your routines. The design can be fitted onto most plastic ball chains making it suitable for both vertical and horizontal blinds and uses an infrared sensor to receive signals from a remote control. I designed the gear and housing to be 3D printed. You can download the files through the link in the video description. I printed out the components using PLA and a 15% infill. The housing walls are quite thick so that you can easily drill holes through it to be mounted onto a wall or frame. The best would be to edit the model file and add your holes before 3D printing, depending on how you're going to be mounting it. You can screw the back of the housing in place and then add the front cover with the motor and components so that the screws are hidden. Start by mounting the motor onto the front cover using two M3 by 8mm screws in the top two holes. You may need to modify the gear if your chain is spaced differently or if your motor shaft is a slightly different diameter. Secure the gear using an M2 grub screw, which sits on the flat face of the motor shaft. Next put the gear cover on and use two M3 by 15mm screws through to the motor to hold it in place. The front cover screws onto the back with more M3 by 15mm screws. I've put it together here to check that everything fits correctly, but you won't need to do so until you've put your electronic components together as well. In addition to your Arduino and stepper motor driver, you'll also need an infrared receiver, a 10k resistor and a 100 microfarad capacitor. I'll put links to these components in the video description. I started out with a really bad drawing, which I then transferred into a breadboard layout. The resistor goes across the infrared sensors 5V and data pins, and the capacitor across the power supply for the stepper motor driver. You can use the supply voltage between 5 and 12V, but a higher voltage produces more power from the motor. You can't go above 12V as the Arduino Pro Micro is limited to a 12V supply voltage. Let's assemble the components. The connections are all made on sections of header strips, which are cut to size according to the components. You'll need two 8-pin strips for the stepper motor driver, one 12-pin strip for the Arduino, as you're only using the pins on one side, and then one 3-pin strip for the infrared sensor. In order to connect the stepper motor to the driver, you'll need to figure out which of the stepper motor leads belong to each of the two coils. If you're not using the same motor as I've used, use a multimeter to measure the resistance across each wire pair. The pairs associated with each coil should read about 4 to 5 ohms, while you should get a mega ohm reading for the other combinations. On this motor, one coil is connected to the blue and black leads, and the other to the green and red leads. Once your header strips are ready, you should have two strips for your motor driver, one for your Arduino and one for your infrared sensor. There's one more thing to set up before powering up your Arduino. You need to set the motor current limits on the driver. To do this, you'll need to power up the driver, which can be done by supplying 5 volts to the logic circuit using your Arduino. 
Then calculate your reference voltage using the following formula. Your reference voltage is calculated by multiplying your motor's maximum current by 8 and then by your driver's current sensing resistance. Your motor's maximum current can be found on the data sheet. Ours is 0.9 amps. The driver's current sensing resistance is 0.068 ohms for most of the newer drivers. Using this formula we calculate that our reference voltage should be about 0.49 volts. This voltage is measured and set on the pot on the bottom of the motor driver using a small screwdriver to make the adjustments. Start by measuring the reference voltage using a multimeter, then make small adjustments clockwise to increase and anti-clockwise to decrease the voltage until this matches your calculated reference voltage. If you have clips on your multimeter leads, clip the positive onto the metal part of your screwdriver and you'll be able to see the voltage change as you adjust the part. Once your current limit is set, then you're ready to power up your Arduino and upload the code. I started out by getting the motor working and stepping for 2 seconds in each direction. This was to test the motor connections and check the motor direction. I then uploaded the actual code. The code makes use of the R remote library for the infrared sensor inputs, creating an infrared object with pin 10 as the sensor's input pin. The stepper motor driver is connected to pins 14 and 15 to control the direction and provide the pulse signals. We then have a couple of parameters for the blinds which need to be adjusted. The first is for the direction, with 0 being the default and 1 being reverse. The second is the blind length, which is the number of motor pulses to drive the full length of the blind. Then the blind's initial position, 0 being fully open. And finally the blind speed, which is the motor speed. A lower number is the faster speed. In the setup function, we start the serial communication. This is initially used to get the infrared codes from your remote in order to add them to the code and this can be commented out once you've done this. We then start the infrared receiver and assign the motor driver output pins. The loop function waits for a signal to be received from the infrared remote, then displays it on the serial monitor. This can also be commented out after setup. The drive motor function is then called to drive the motor before waiting for the next infrared signal. The delay is just added for stability. The drive motor function gets the infrared signal as an unsigned long variable type. A switch statement then decides what the motor should do based on the signal received. The hex codes in this section need to be changed according to what was shown in your serial monitor when you push the corresponding button on your own remote. You can use the remote that came with your sensor or an old TV remote or a universal remote, as long as your Arduino can read the signal from it. Each case in the switch statement decides on the motor movement based on the blind's current position and the desired position. It then tells the motor how to move by calling the move motor function, giving it direction and the number of steps. The move motor function then sets the direction of the motor driver and generates the pulses in order to move the motor. It's a good idea to test it out and get your code working properly and make any adjustments to travel limits before putting the electronics into the housing. Once you're happy with the code, stick the Arduino and motor driver to the supports in the housing using double-sided tape. Don't forget to add your heatsink to your motor driver too. Don't worry about needing to make adjustments to your code, the USB port on your Arduino is still accessible with it stuck in place. You can now upload the final version of your code before closing up the housing.
I haven't put any holes into the housing to mount it, as there are a number of different ways this opener could be mounted, and I didn't want the housing to be full of spare holes. The most simple would be to use two screws through the back or the sides of the housing. You should be able to mount the back of the housing and then replace the front face with all of the electronics so that the screws are no longer visible. You can drill holes through the back or sides. The best would be to add the holes to the model before 3D printing it. Let's have a look at the opener in action. I may look at trying to dampen some of the sound from the stepper motor with a rubber pad as it is quite noisy when running. To operate your opener with an Alexa enabled Amazon device, you'll need a Smart Home Universal Remote like this RM Mini 3. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Use the Intelligent Home Center app to teach the remote the signals from your existing remote, and you'll then be able to add these commands to your Echo devices and integrate the opening and closing of your blinds into your routines or use timers. Alexa, close the blinds. Okay. Thanks for watching and remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, repairs and reviews.